Face this way, spread your legs. Spread them farther. Doesn't have to be pretty, man. I said, Chris, this could have been avoided that day if you would have gone to the holding to the court with me, got arraigned. They wouldn't be taking your van. You wouldn't have a window issue now. All I ask is to see the warrant. I said, come out to the car and I'd show it to you. It was on the computer. We don't carry That's paper warrants warrant. anymore. There has to be a paper warrant. No, there does not. Everything's electronic According nowadays. According to the rules of criminal procedure, it does. Well, you're wrong. You didn't read them correctly. New York State. Everything's gone to electronics now, Chris. I told you that that day. Watch my head. Nope. Take a seat inside. No. No. <clears throat> All right. I will uh, get them going. You want to do the paperwork or no? If not, I can do it when I get there. It's not a big deal. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's fine. I got his squad of tickets here that goes with him into his property. Arrest warrant or back to I think ours is an arrest warrant. So we got to yeah, double check. So, All right. Thank gentlemen, you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to get him moving downtown. Where's my property? Stay with me. Property's right here. Phone's in there. Phone is in there. Your change is in there. Your tickets from them are in there. For sure, yeah. I told you that day, Chris, I don't play games. 45. Very, very upfront, honest with you. I'd have wrench left the scene with the vehicle. Like I said, um, myself before. Wasn't not the personal against you, sir. I didn't take it personal, Chris. Dirty and lied to me. You know, yep. I, they've, nothing, they've done nothing to me to, 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 to um, gain trust. The things that gain trust with me, you know. One second, please. Okay, yes. Five South Radio. Okay. Five South. One male on board and rocks the holding center. All right, I'm sorry about that. So, like I told you that day, <clears throat> if you had, uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. Right here. I know it's gonna be hard for you to read because it's tiny print, all right? But I, can't see that from here. I know I'm just trying to show you that it's on the card, and if this thing ever stops updating, I mean, I, I saw the thing that was on the, the warrant uh, watch list. Yep. But that doesn't have a stamp on the court and, and, a, and a signed, um, you know, a signature. And, um, so you know, and, and it's your charges with with state police are criminal mischief, damaged property. All right, that's a bench warrant out of them. Ours is failure to appear, it's an adult arrest warrant, and it has something to do with the assault. I don't know what assault. Because I wasn't the arresting officer there, so I don't know what, but it's uh, assault. Third, a misdemeanor. Why doesn't it say that? It just says assault. Assault's not even a charge, is it? Yes, it is, assault third. Assault third is a charge, but assault is not. Right. Assault category three. So it's assault third, the way it comes up. It's a class A misdemeanor. That's what that is. So section PL penal law section 120.00 A misdemeanor category three under assault. It's assault third. It's just the way they put it in the system is a little bit backwards. Yeah, because it didn't it didn't um uh, it didn't say that on, on the um you know that, that mean what they put on the uh, you know the warrant list there. Yep. Just said assault. So because I was already arrested for assault. In, right. In the this. Third. You're right. So you were arrested on it. However, you failed to go back to court on that same charge. 
So the warrant was issued for the original charge, which is assault third. Well, it's kind of hard to so, it without um, being summoned to, to, to go there. Well, I understand this, and this is why I told you that day, you have a warrant. You don't want to come out, that's fine. Now, just so we're clear, I was within my legal right to kick your door in and come in and drag you out of that house because of the warrant, the warrant level. I did not do that, and I told you I would not do that, but I did have legal right to do that. All right, I saw you in the house. I knew who you were because you identified yourself to me. All right, I've talked with you in the past and I identified you in the past. So I've had past dealings, so I, I was able to easily identify you. Okay. I did have I did have probable cause to come in. I could have broken in the house, with kicked the door in it, and taken you into custody. I did not. Right? I, I explained the process, told you to contact the court, and get it taken care of. And I told you that I was leaving. State police told you that you had a warrant with them as well. You could have at any point in time turned yourself into the court, gotten those taken care of. And I said, one of these days you're going to get caught on a traffic stop. They're going to take your car. It's going to cost you a lot of extra fees and BS. I get it. You didn't want to trust me. You think I like living like this? Chris, I'm not saying you do or terrible. not. It's terrible. Right. Like I said, I'm not saying you are or not, and I'm not trying to preach to you. I'm just saying I gave you easier ways to handle this other than what just happened today. I understand. All right. You know, you, you, I, I didn't want what happened today. The situation. You know? It was, I, it was thrown in your lap that somebody else started. But, um. Unfortunately, I had to act on it. I tried to serve it. You said no. I said, you know what? It's not worth me all the paperwork and the BS to kick the door in and come in and get you just to serve a BS warrant. Turn yourself in and get it take care of it. That's all I said, and we left. Like I said, I could have gone much further that day. I didn't deem it necessary for me to cross those steps. I can't be doing it. Yes. May I say something? I would love to hear it. I understand um, your, your, um, your view on that matter. But um, try to look at things from my point of view, if you could, that I have been falsely arrested twice already. <laughs> once from the state troopers and once from the um, sheriff's department. There was no exigent circumstances. Okay? They, they, they did not... Uh, uh, witness me committing a, a crime. You, you understand that, that, that they uh, had, had to intervene with. There was a plan um, to come to my house. And then um, there was no probable cause ever shown. And no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause. So why does this just drag on and on and then um, I'm going to be arrested for the same thing it's all tricks. Like I said, so I could have gone much farther that day when I was at the house. All right. New York State uh, CPL, criminal procedure law, says I can enter your residence to effect the arrest of that warrant and serve that duly that served warrant. a big mistake. I'm glad you didn't because I kind of uh, like, no, like it. No, I'm going to tell you right now. The reason I didn't is because you said you had problems with people in the past. So I was trying to show good faith and show that, hey, listen, I'm a man of my word. Here's your warrant. I'm telling you about it. Try to take care of it. But I, never I saw, gave I never you. Saw it though, I don't I have to it. show it to you. That's that's a falsehood. I don't know who gave you that lie, but you do not. You are not required to see a radar reading. You're not required to see the body cam footage of the crime, and you're not required to see the paper warrant. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. No, it's not. I'm telling you. Talk to your lawyer, because I'm telling you right now, that's a falsehood that somebody's spreading around, and it's not the case. Well, look into it for yourself. I have. I, I have. After I talked to you that day, I did go back and look at it, and I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I don't have to show you the warrant. It has to have the seal? The original does. I do not have to see that, nor do I have to produce it. I can act on good faith if the system tells me there's a warrant. I can act on that. I do not have to have the original, nor do I have to produce it. So what I showed you on here on the computer was fully sufficient. I didn't need to show it to you. I just had to see it for myself. I'm trying to show you that I'm not a shyster. I'm not going to pull shit with you. I'm straight up and honest and very, very direct. I appreciate that. And, um, I can understand your point of view. Okay. I, I okay. That, this, But that's what I said. That's the reason I did not kick your door in that day to serve that warrant. Is okay. to show you that. Listen, that's, that's I, I'm very direct and very honest that's with you. The use of discretion on your part. 
So I did that. Anybody else from other departments may have just said, booted that door in and said, let's go. And then you would have been hit with another resisting arrest charge because I'm sure you would have not laid down and complied immediately. Well, how is that? That's not resisting. It is if you're actively f pulling back. If I reach out to, to grab your hand and you pull your hand back, technically that's resisting under the law of New York State. Any, uh, any resistance whatsoever. So. Well, why did they charge me with resisting arrest? How did I resist arrest them? Here yeah. today? Yeah. I wasn't there. Well, I'll tell you what I was told. I was told, A, you didn't stop right away for a traffic stop until they cut, they pulled in front of you. Two, when he told you you were under arrest for the warrant, you refused to roll down the window and refused to comply with him. That's actively resisting. He had to, I'm assuming, break the window unless you broke it. I don't know. It got broke. for my safety. I understand that. You can say that all you want, and you can use that as an offense, but it's not going to work because you've been told on numerous occasions you have two warrants. And I still have not yet to, yet to see them. You don't need to see them, Why Chris. Why was I not served any papers? You don't need to be served. You knew you were given a court date at one point in time. Whether you lost it or whether you didn't go to it on purpose doesn't matter. You are then not required to be reserved a second time with the same charge and the same paperwork. I was never served once. The first you time. went to see a judge. You were given paperwork that time and given a new court date. You could not have gotten arrested without seeing a judge. You have 72 hours to see a judge. Right. So when I called you in custody in my car when we left there, I'm gonna we'll just pretend it was two o'clock because it's 207 now. The judge has 72 hours from wherever, whoever signed this warrant, that judge has 72 hours to produce you in front of that, in front of their courtroom. They could pull you out in an hour. They could let you sit there for 70 hours. Well, that's won't. that's up to them. Won't. That day I was at your house, I had Judge Ricotta out of Toronto, North Carolina sitting at the court waiting to see if you were coming to turn yourself in with me. And like I promised you, I would have taken you there and I would have brought you back to your front door. Yeah, but then the state trooper stepped up and said, and then we're going to take you into custody. Well, he would have had to take you from your front door, because I promised you I would bring you back there. Oh, really? I would, not have, I would not have let him take you from the you court. You would have handed me over to him in chains? Not, no, I would have taken my oh. cuffs off you in your driveway, and if he was there to take you into custody, I made a promise to you, and I would have kept that promise. You know what, man? We, I believe you. So I do. I, I don't, I mean, have, it, I it doesn't you. benefit me to pull games and, and lie to you, because I don't get jack shit for whether I make the arrest or not. And that's why I walked away, because it don't matter to me. If I make the arrest, somebody's going to catch you. With all due respect, um, I have been studying law, and um, I, I hope that you look further into it um, to, to, um, to, to try to um, gain, gain a deeper understanding of, of, um, of some of these basic things that, um, that uh, are, are largely overlooked in law enforcement. Man, we, I'm listening. Because, you know, when you... Um, when you, you know, you're coming after a man violently, you know, on somebody else's, you know, shit that they started, you know, but you're really sticking your neck out there um, to, to clean up their their mess, you know, that, that was um, without without certain things being established is um, is basically fraud, you know, and no, no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause. You know, that's one of the most basic stuff, you know. So principles. probable cause, somebody, all somebody has to do is say, listen. I got robbed or I got punched, all right? Now, an assault third, there's gotta be some kind of serious physical injury. So, it's not just a red mark on a cheek. I don't know what your assault charge was, I don't really care, all right? Hey, That's I'm between you and whatever happened. You know, but I will but tell you about the procedure. That, that what, I, what I will say is, if that person made a statement and had the sufficient injury that went above and beyond harassment and it went to the misdemeanor level, that's probable cause. Their statement is probable cause that it happened. That's all we need. You understand that, right? That's hearsay. No, it doesn't matter. It's them. Now, they're signing that under the penalty of perjury. All right, so if it turns out that they're, they lied under perjury, now they're punished for perjuring themselves up to a year in jail, fines, and whatnot. Now, if they lied about the extent of the injury and it only falls to a harassment level, Harassment level, we're not going to act on that. They have to act on it. Like in the second, for example, 
Any physical contact. You push, shove, or strike somebody. Is harassment? Yep. I thought that was assault. Nope. Assault, there has to be some kind of physical injury. So if, if you walk up to somebody and slap them on the face and it leaves a red mark, no swelling, just a red mark, you know how that happens, that's a harassment. That's not if, battery? Nope. We don't have battery. That's a Pennsylvania thing. Oh, really? Yes. And that's why I said, depending on how you're reading and researching things, you're going to get various states mixed into the same thing. Like here, um, harassment could be threatening text messages or a threat, I'm going to kill you. All right. A verbal threat here, I'm going to kill you. It's harassment level. It's a violation. You say that in Pennsylvania, that's a terroristic threat and it's an A misdemeanor. Oh, really? Yes. That's why I said every state's different. And everybody acts differently on how their laws are, A, enforced, and B, what happens. Like Pennsylvania, you get video arraigned as soon as the judge comes back on duty. You don't come out of the jail and go to the court. They do a video arraignment. They pull you to another cell. You sit in that cell at the table. You talk to a, a television on the wall, which is the judge. He reads you the charges, asks you for your plea. I've been in a video court before. Right. Here in New York State... We're so behind the time still, we have to, we don't have to, but we have been taking somebody out of the holding center, drive them to court, put them in front of a judge, driving them back to holding center. Now, the problem with that is it causes numerous uh, chances for an escape. It causes numerous chances for, uh, God forbid, a traffic accident or, you know, any kind of, we could be uh, hijacked, we could be, you know, whatever. You know, let's just say your partner today, your passenger rather, uh, decides he wants to follow us and run us off the road, break you out now. Well, wow. you know, now that that's the whole thing. Whereas, or he knows, hey, you're coming from court on Saturday at, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, he can sit there and run you off the road. He can try to break you out. Now it's it, it's compounding. There's injuries. There's everything else going to happen out of it. Right? For the most part, yes, but it does happen. All right, I'm just saying is if New York came up to, you know, if New York caught up with the times, um, they would do the video arraignments. One of the things that bothers me about this state, I can see you across the parking lot. You could threaten to come over there and punch me in the face. Harassment. You text me, I'm going to punch you in the face. Aggravated harassment, that's a misdemeanor. You can send that text message from anybody. How... How is a text message when you're in Ohio, say you're at Columbus, Ohio, enjoying dinner, and you send me a text saying, I'm going to come over and I'm going to punch you in the face, knock your teeth out. How is that more threatening and more uh, a higher level than you standing in front of me telling me you're going to do it? I can actually receive injury when we're face-to-face arguing like that. I cannot receive injury through a text message when I have no idea where you're at. But New York State is still backwards. And they still rate the black and white proof higher than the verbal he said, she said proof. Now, why can I be caused injury, though, when, you know, if tossed around like a rag doll, you know, like like um, these agencies have, um, you know, ownership o- over my body, you know? When, when um, I, I've been arrested on this this before, you know, that this seems, this is all unnecessary. What, are they, what is the goal, then, to hold me in um, pretrial detention? No, the goal is to get you in front of a judge. This warrant that I have, the, the, the active warrant I have right now is a failure to appear. So you skipped a court date. I understand you said you didn't get the new court date. You were never given the, the served by the court. I get all that. I wasn't. Okay. Well, I'm telling you, though, New York State doesn't give a shit. They don't care. Obviously. And they do not. They stated... They do not need to provide you with that proof. You're told about it when you were arrested and when you saw the judge the original time. That's all they care about. But police lie, as it turns out. Not you. I'm not saying you. But um, they're authorized to lie. Everybody everybody lies at some point regarding something. Whether you're three years old about a pack of gum, whether it's six, six years old when you took a dollar from your father's wallet, whatever the case is, somebody lies somewhere along the lines. All right. I understand what how you how you view your situation. All right. I'm not faulting you at that for 
any any aspect of it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Everybody has their agenda in their lifetime of what they can do, when they got to do it, that kind of thing. All right. Is there always a, an, a different solution to everything? Yes, there is. In law, yes, there is. Regardless in of order. which side of the fence you're on, there's always a different approach or a different path you can travel to handle the same thing. Particularly you in know, law. I, I, I perfect example, when I was at your house two months ago, I could have kicked the door and affected that arrest right then and there, Lady and this, and this wasn't happening today. However, if I did that, it would have then given you a bad taste of me you would have thought I was just like everybody else that you've dealt with that did you dirty, so you said, and it would not have given you a positive aspect on anything. Right. Well, All I wanted to do that fair day. On you because because you didn't um, create the situation. If you to put your neck on the line for, for somebody else's, you know, horseshit, you know, it's not right. You know, you don't seem to be a sadist. You know, like a lot of these. I, uh, like a lot I, of these I give, I give. I'll be honest with you. I give two shits. How many arrests I make in a year, or how many tickets I write in a year. I don't care. I do my job when I need to do my job. If I can use my discretion and somebody's working with me, great, I'll use my discretion. So, to me, it doesn't matter if I get you uh, back then, today, next month. I don't care if I ever catch you. Somebody's going to eventually, because the plates on a car were completely forged. They're not real plates. They look pretty damn good, I'll give you that. But they weren't real plates. You know, the, the, that plate comes back to a completely separate car across the state. Um, but I knew that eventually, I don't care if you want to call it luck, I don't care if you want to call it strategy, eventually your path and somebody's path are going to intertwine and it's not going to be as smooth as it could have been. You know, same thing for me. I could drive safely for 35 years. Eventually, I'm going to see a green light, I'm going to go through, and I'm not going to slow down, I'm not going to look, and now I'm going to get T-boned. So your path always crosses somewhere. Sometimes it's in a good way, sometimes it's in a bad way. I travel my path in peace, and I, you know, I, right. I, I do not, I not cause injury or harm to anybody. Right, and like I said, that's why I, I told you about the warrant. I said, this is how you fix it. Call a court, get a new court date, show up. Because if you show up on your own, the judge says, hey, you know what? He said that Erie County Sheriff Deputy Van Wee told him about the warrant. He called, got a new court date, and he came in on his own. All right, that's more likely for them to say, released on your own, send you on your way. And then, you know, you start making your court date, and it's all said and done. It's too easy. Let's consider this, okay? Um, what would you like to be called, Van Wee? That's fine. Okay, consider this, though. All things in court... Are, are supposed to be documented, right? For the record, you know, let the record show and, and all that. Other than that, I mean, what's the point of being in court if it's not on the record? And, and, and for the record, you know, and documented. Several so, years ago, and I don't know if it was three, I'm sorry, I cut you off. I don't know if it was three years ago, five years ago, seven years ago. But every courtroom now is state mandated that A, you have to go through their magnetometer, make sure you're not carrying weapons in, and B, every courtroom is wired for sound, and they're trying to make sure they're all wired for video as well. But I know that every single court proceeding right now, the judge, when he comes in, he has to have the microphone on, and he has to record every single case in one long cassette, Good. from start to finish. For the record, for the record. Yep, and then they keep that, rec it's all digital recordings now, they don't use a tape recorder. It's all digitally right into a hard drive, saved, and then it gets, and then it gets. Uh, sorry, um, but it, it, that's the way they they've been doing that for the last several years. Well, good. I may have to FOIA request those um, court transcriptions because um, that criminal mischief charge was dismissed a long time ago. I don't know where the state troopers are coming off of that. Theirs is a bench warrant for that charge. Vengeance warrant. Bench. It means the judge ordered you to in front of them, not to the holding center. So if the state police would have picked you up, they would have taken you right to that judge. Instead of taking, like, me, mine's an arrest warrant for failure to appear. So we're going to the holding center. Now, like I told you that day, well, that's a I had a bench warrant 
is what the state police have. We have an arrest warrant. So I, I take you into custody. I take you downtown. They do the whole processing for the failed to appear arrest warrant on the original charge. And then once you're processed, they contact that judge and say, hey, we have, uh, we have Christopher here. When can you do the arraignment on this and get him back in front of your court on your docket? Couldn't all of this been um, avoided by just um, sending me a letter stating what you know what, what they expected of me? That's same way it would have had to happen. The same way it could have been avoided if you called the court and say, "Hey, I was told by somebody that I have a warrant. Can you verify this? And how do I get it taken care of?" They could have done the, the exact same thing. Yes. All right. Now. I don't know if you've moved in the past so many months or so many years. I don't know if they have the right address on file. I don't know any of that. All right. But like I said, that day, instead of taking you to the holding center, which we are doing now, I had the judge waiting. I would have taken you right to the court, brought you right back. And that's why I told you, because you were recording me that day, or appeared to be recording me with your phone. My safety. Right, and I, and that's why I told you I was. That's fine. You have the right to do that. Cam going to him, and if I request the footage for that. I do. It's on. My my cam is on. That's that's just to promote transparency, right? That, that, yeah. That's a good thing, I, right? For, I, for everyone involved, isn't it? I like it because now you can't say, uh, well, we pulled over and he kicked me in my head. He did this. He did that. Because the body cam is going to prove that that didn't happen. It promotes transparency. Which yes. Is good for everybody. So it shows that you know. I'm not abusing my powers. It shows if you are actively resisting and fighting in the whole nine yards. It shows what I say so that I can't make shit up. You can't make shit up. Like you said, transparency all across the board. So, I like the body cameras. I have mine on. It's almost always running. So It's good unless you, you, know, you get something to hide, but you, you, know, you shouldn't act in official duties. And that's but why I, I said it. Man, we, I do urge you to, um, to look at that, uh, that warrant about, about um, signed, sealed, and delivered deeper before you, know, you find yourself in a similar situation because um, everything's there. You know, in, in the, um, I know guys that have gotten... Procedure. I know guys that have gotten sued because somebody said it was a false arrest because they didn't show the warrant. And the judge and the lawyers have deemed that they don't need to, that they don't know where he got that information from. So that's why I said I went back and looked it up. It doesn't say I have to provide you a copy of the warrant. Look, look somewhere else, cry for us. It's, 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 it's New York State criminal procedure law. Case law. It's, it's criminal procedure law. And it's been done through the courts that it, you know we we don't have to. That's why I said, if you want, I won't even take custody of you. I'm not that day. I said I wasn't even. A, we'll walk out to my car. You can have a seat right there. I'll bring it up on the computer and show you. And then when I'm show you that I'm right, I'll put you in cuffs and I'll take you to the court then. But on, on a computer screen, can't um, demonstrate the seal, the, the embossed seal of the court, and a wet ink signature. Right, but I, again, we don't have to provide that. Um, I respectfully disagree. I, which is fine. And I urge you to yeah. look into it further be, before you, um, you know, make another move and go down. For, well, for let, let's put it this way. Shit. I'm already served this warrant today. So, I'm already down that rabbit hole right now, according to you. I showed you on paper, on the computer, what I had and what I was acting on. You're saying that I did it wrong. I couldn't read that from here. I, I understand you can't read it from here, and that's why I said I don't know how to make this screen bigger. Yeah, well, it's all about the original with the, with the wet ink signature. And so, the seal of, of the court. That now, authenticates the document. I understand that, but now let me let me ask you this question. The judge signs that. It goes to, let's just say, our agency. My agency sends it out to me. What happens when I lose that warrant now? Why would you lose it? Well, let's just say that... Um, it was in here, let's pretend I spilled coffee on it, or let's say I said it uh, when I was carrying it from the car to the station at the end of the night, I dropped it and didn't see it, and it got covered in snow. <clears throat> now you're telling me that that warrant's no longer valid because I can't find it? Well, I think you know, they entrusted it with you because uh, you're one of the more competent uh, 
you know, man in there, uh, true. Right. So, so that was something like that wouldn't happen. You know, do you lose your wallet every every other day? No. In the know. past, I have lost it once, but it's not all the time. It's a rare occurrence. Right. It, it is a rare occurrence, but it does happen. And, you know, uh, so. Boy, boy, would you be in trouble. But. You know, but I can't speak for every agency, but our agency stopped sending us out paper copies of our warrants years ago. I don't know what the change was. If it was because they said the electronic version is is serves just as legitimate purpose as the paper one, I don't know if somebody lost a warrant and that's what happened. I, I don't know what happened. Could it be because it um it, it skips uh, that you know that pesky stop of having to establish probable cause? No, because the you have to you have to establish probable cause in order to get the warrant. Exactly. So, so without having once the warrant is signed, you've already established your probable cause. I don't need to reestablish it again. Hold on one second. Go ahead, buddy. Um, hang on a second. All right, you're on. You're on speakerphone. In the car. Hang on. Call radio. Um. All right. I just did the uh, arrest card. I did it bench warrant under the CL that you generated there. Are you sure? I thought ours was an arrest warrant. Uh, I thought state police was a bench warrant. Uh, I think ours was an arrest warrant for failure to appear. A failure to appear would be a bench warrant, and it states that. Uh, I'll pull back up again. For that. Yeah. Arrest type of warrant, bench warrant. Okay. By Judge Ricotta for failure to appear on one twenty six twenty two. All right. Well, I was wrong, Chris. It's a bench warrant. <clears throat> All right, that's fine. I thought it, I thought ours was an arrest warrant, and state police had a bench warrant. I'm uh, looking up the police to see what they say on theirs. I'm pretty sure theirs one says uh, bench warrant at the bottom of it. You better double check that shit. Yeah. So. Yeah, mine's showing mine's showing bench warrant. So I don't okay. Know right. Hey, like I said, I might maybe I'm confusing it with another warrant we tried to serve recently, but I thought ours was an arrest warrant. Yeah. So I just told Chris that I was wrong and it was a bench warrant. Because you said you looked it up. On the original cell, I pulled it up and showed him that he showed up to court. The patrol took him into custody, processed him. So right. Okay. Perfect. Make sure you make sure you stress the point that had he just listened to us that day. No, we've already we, we've already had an in-depth conversation. We're good. All right, later. So thanks. All right, too easy. I'm not gonna let him give you the same talk that we, you and I just had. Yeah, that was the K9 so, guy. Yes. What was his name? He only had a number on his uniform. Skatulski. Skatulski. Yep. The uh, courts have deemed that law enforcement can either do the name badge or their uh, their name tag or a badge number. What's up with those Gowanda guys? With neither. I don't know what their their policy procedure states. Well, I know that Buffalo no PD. Display. I know Buffalo PD and uh, Erie County Sheriff have adopted the court ruling. We can either do the name or the badge. And to be quite honest with you, I'm too lazy to go down to the to the uniform place and place the order and pay the four dollars for the for the uh, name tag. So I still leave my name my uh, name tag on instead of badge. Hey, what the hell difference is it? I mean, you know, you're, you're gonna it's gonna right? get the same number. You're gonna get the same information if I give you. My badge number is, is 92, and you call the department, and they say 92 is, is registered to Deputy Van Wee. So, they're, you know, you're, it's the same information. Those Galanda guys have no identification, and they don't have a badge either. It's, a, it's a, like a part of their shirt. Yeah. And then they got that blue line flag on their shoulder, and um, they're very rude and aggressive, you know? I don't, I don't know where they get off. I really don't. The problem with... Uh, Every agency is different, and every agency has their tolerance for, um, I, I, I don't want to use the, the term argumentative uh, or uncooperative, but everybody, you know, I don't know, for example, I don't know, have you ever heard the term, um, oh, good Lord, what the hell is it, um, natural citizen, uh, naturalized citizen, or um, free traveler, any of those, um, 
a lot of times you'll get some people that say, I don't identify as a U.S. citizen. I identify as, there's a bigger term, but basically they claim that they're a naturalized uh, citizen of the free world or of North America. They try to say that they are uh, a free traveler uh, upon North America. And they try to use they, they try to use the old federal codes to to bypass the laws, you know, needing registration, insurance, and licenses, and all that nonsense. But every single time when they go in and they fight this in court, they lose. It it's been denied every single court case, all the way up to the Supreme Court. And you know, we still have two or three in our area that try to claim that. And, well, down on uh, the reservation, Chautauqua County, uh, Cat County, right on the border there, there's two or three people that, that try to say they're free travelers and they don't need to um, speak to us, they don't need to provide identification, they don't need to cooperate with patrol, and then they try to say, if you ask me, if you say one more word, you're agreeing to paying me my fee of $1,500 per minute to have a conversation with you. And, and then they, they even print it out and they tape it to the windows. Well, you know, I can print anything out. Well, Doesn't mean it's enforceable. And, and take, take them down? Like, for what? I'll give you about four or five minutes to, you know, I, like you. I give and take. I'll listen to you. You listen to me. I, you know, and it goes back and forth. At one point in time, I said, all right. Here's your final warning. This is what I'm going to do if this does not happen. I don't know how quickly it happened with you today with Gwanda. All right, I was, like I said, I wasn't there. I was in route. Oh, about but, a minute and a half. You know what I mean? So with that being said, they got off on it. You know, I would have given you a couple of warnings. Chris, this is what's going to happen, and this is why. After you refuse to cooperate, I usually go three separate times. I give you a warning three times. I say this is your fi third and final warning. This is what's going to happen. And then I go that way. This way you cannot say you were surprised, you were scared, you didn't know what was happening. I fear for my safety had weapons drawn. Like I said, I don't know what they did. I don't usually draw a weapon unless A, it's a felony warrant, or B, you have some kind of displayed, something displayed, and I think it's a warrant. A weapon, rather. No, I had my hands up, and I nope. said that I, 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 not that I, I was in peace. Right. I was I, in peace. I, I was not. They were super aggressive. Like I said, I'm. I don't. They don't work for me. I can't control what they do or don't do. I wasn't there. I don't know if they have body cams on or not. I don't think they do. They don't even have identification. Um, I know. Tags. Like Town of Evans doesn't have badge or uh, name tags on their vests either. They're but as hell, aren't they? Yeah, they they do have body cams now. So, like I said, that's kind of it's kind of what we got going on there. Well, uh, they come at me in violence. I wasn't harming anybody, you know. What where they, what gives them the right? The, the two active warrants, which we have yet to see. You know, it, it doesn't matter. It's in the computer. It does, that's it, all we it need. Me, I, I understand your point of view. I'm not going to argue it with you because you see it your way, I see it my way, but I know that I wouldn't have done this if I thought I was going to get jammed up after the fact. If I thought for one second, even 1% that, hey, I'm going to get jammed up for not showing him a paper copy of a warrant and I'm going to end up getting sued and losing my job over it, I wouldn't do it. If I had any doubt, I wouldn't have made the arrest, I wouldn't have taken custody of you doing this this way. I know that I'm right from what I've been taught and what I've read and what I've seen. You, you see on your side of things that you think you're right? Because you come at me as a man. It's, you know, instead of um, somebody trying to, trying to fear. You know, trying I don't. To, I'm going to hit the brakes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And hurt, hurt me. You know? yeah. I don't need to. Because, you know, that badge bad don't, don't mean. I don't care if anybody's tougher than me or, or any of that nonsense. I don't need to prove uh, I'm big, bad, tough cop. I just said, hey, this is what, this is what I got to do. A lot of these guys do, and they make it harder on you, you know, and I don't want you to. And I'll, and I'll be honest with you, had you not been um, verbally 
I, not, I don't want to say argumentative, but verbally, uh, combative is not the right word, but... Uh, Interactive? Yeah, you were... You were, um, you were questioning things and argument and not really arguing things, but you were conflicting everything I had to say. That's the only reason you're still cuffed behind your back. Otherwise, I would have cuffed you up front. You would have been a little bit more comfortable for this 35, 40 minute ride in. And that's why I said, you know, okay. listen, Chris, you know, and I, and I, I told you honest, no, I don't need to do anything. And, and I told you very honestly, I said, listen, this is what, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to go on. Once you started arguing with, with the other two guys, I said, all right, we're not going to play the game. I'm just going to, because as soon as he takes the cuff off, my cuffs are on. Oh, we're going to slide in the car that way. Mine are much looser than theirs were because I can put uh, my finger in underneath both sides. Yeah, and yeah they had so, them on pretty tight, didn't they? They had them on pretty tight. If it, if it leaves a mark, I'm making a mental note of that now. If they were previously so, put on much t- that it was not, you would have put them on too tight. Like no, I, I, always, I always put mine on. I check it with a finger, and then I double cuff it. If I know that you can't slip your wrist that's good for, good well, enough for me double, when you double lock it then i can't they can, tighten it you're right you can't tighten it leaning on it right exactly and yeah, that's you're you're gonna gonna say you did. i wouldn't do that shit but I, I yeah. then you know that they stay where, you, where how you put them those guys are total assholes man Three, yep they uh like i said everybody everybody can act differently in any given situation i copy I haven't threatened anybody to come at anybody with violence, you know? And that's why I said I... Get off doing it to me. I don't, don't know, like I said, I wasn't... I don't know what they did or how they did it. I wasn't there for any of that. I showed up. You were already in the back seat of the car. And... PD stop you for your traffic stop. Four of them. You had two, four of them, two, cars. two cars, only uh, only two actual cops there. Then you had the marshal show up because technically we were on nation territory at the border there. Oh, really? I should have stopped. Uh, well, <laughs> you would have, you would have, yeah. Kidding, man. We, uh, you know, whether or not you stop for a marshal stopping you, I could give two shits because, you know, theoretically, they don't have police powers. Okay. So, um, but then you had us show up because of our warrant. I knew we had a warrant, so I showed up. My partner showed up because when uh, Gwanda put it out over the air, you were combative and you were. They were going to have to break the window. Everybody stepped it up. It was a lie. State police showed up. All right, because they also had a warrant for you. Which is also a lie. So. According to the computer again, there's two warrants. Ours was the higher charge, so we took you and uh, and go that way. You know, if you would have went with them, you'd have been in cuffs till they took and found a judge. Then the judge would have done whatever he was going to do. Then they would have come and met us. Then we would have gone downtown. <coughs> At least if I get you down here, I get you out of cuffs. You're not tied up all day long in the back of a car, Number uncomfortable. So I can take you down here, you get you out of accident. the cuffs, out of the car, get you a judge quicker because now I'll have the entire holding center. The uh, booking department will be calling to get a hold of one of the two judges until they figure it out. The city judge? 
No, you're most likely going to come back out and see Judge Ricotta and Collins. Which means they're going to have to get a hold of her to see when she's available. Let's say Tuesday. Yeah. Um, court was last night and Thursday. So she'll usually come in and meet. You know, then they're going to have to uh, get a jail unit to drive you out there, a transport unit to drive you out there, put you in front of the judge, and go that route. I have no idea. Same thing I told you that day Man. when we were at the house. She has she has the option to do bail, to do no bail, or to ROR you and release you in your own recognizance. Those are the three options that every judge has. So the charges. Well, she can't do that at the arraignment. She'll have to set that. She'll have to do one of those three things. Because I'm assuming you're going to plead not guilty. Because she's going to ask you, how do you plead? You're going to say not guilty. She's going to give you another court date. You're going to come back with on that court date. And then that's when lawyers or whoever is going to have to show proof of well, that's good. whatever the crime is is going to happen. Yes, maybe this is good. We should, because all this crap should be going backwards. Because they skipped over um, steps. Which, which is why... Um, why it didn't go anywhere. Five South Radio. This has been since, since July, man. We. That's way too long. I don't the horn sound. Way too long to be living, looking over your shoulder, and and doing whatever the hell's been happening. That's terrible. You know what I'm saying? So. With that being said, I know it's not what you want to hear, but this might at least give you a little bit peace of mind that this shit is coming to an end and closing out on you. You know what I mean? This is what it's like to live like this. It's terrible. Terrible. Listen, man, I was young and dumb and had a warrant for my arrest when I was a kid because I was driving without a license and didn't know it. They came to my house, tried to serve the warrant, and I hate to say it, but luckily somebody else caused a problem, and I didn't have to go that night. I turned myself in in the morning, paid the stupid $80 fine that I forgot to pay. Then I had to pay the $75 surcharge to lift the damn warrant and uh, go from there. So, I mean, I was probably 18 at the time. So, already getting fucking jammed up, extorted money. Up. You know what I mean? I paid my, I paid my stupid fine. Everything was dismissed, and we went from there. This, this is what it is. Oh no, man, we. I'll take it personal from you. But you know what? You know what? Um, I worry about. Do, do you have any pets at home? Yep. You love them, right? Yep. Kind of think, you know, that's what I'm gonna be worried about. When I'm sitting in, in the damn cage here, not knowing when I'm getting out. Because they don't deserve to starve, you know? Oh, I get it. Over this shit. And, uh, I'm not, I'm, when was that, how could I possibly be considered a flight risk? Well, you didn't show, so there, the I problem, the problem with, can... the problem with not coming to court, it tells the court, you're not willing to come in, you're not willing to do anything, so therefore they are uh, less likely to say, oh, okay, yep, come back soon because you didn't come back the last time, you know what I mean? Yeah, but all they had to do was serve me a paper. Right. That's all they had to do. That's all they had to do. All right, let me call. That's all I wanted, you know, because I, I don't know how to how to, um, how to move forward toward, towards the resolution with this stuff. If I don't give any, um, you know, papers, I don't know what to do. And it feels like just another trick or a trap. All right, let me call them, tell them we're out back here. Sally Port. Yeah. It's been a while. You know how long it's been since I've been in here? Hopefully too long. I think it does. I'm going to say a couple of years. Sure, it's fucking stud. Hey, it's Van Wee from the road. I got one out back at the rear of the Sally Port. I don't okay. know if you guys are full or not. I didn't know if you even saw me sneak around, so just letting you know uh, I'm here. Yeah. All right. Thank you.
Everybody. I, I would assume so. They gotta once I process you, you'll be all set. You say a few years? I would say yeah, at least three to five. You know, give me enough credit. That's awesome. Thirteen or thirteen years? Like I said, dude, I was just guessing. I have no idea. All I know is I had one warrant. I served it. That's where we're at. I just thought it would be fun for you to take a guess. No, like I said, it, it, you know, I wouldn't think that you'd been here very often because I hadn't ever made an arrest. So I've only met you, I think, twice. And once was the day I was at your house trying to serve the warrant. I think we crossed paths one other time. You might have been a witness or something. But it wasn't anything criminal, so I knew I've never arrested you before this. Criminal. And that's that's well, good. It, you, you know, the way you talk, it doesn't sound like you are. I got you, Thank you. I will say that I think you are knowledgeable on the law, but you might have been let askew on a couple of details. I think my knowledge exceeds um, most of these officers out here. Right. I've been, their yep. individual knowledge. I, I've been doing this 16 years, and I can always continue to. Um, <laughs> good, how are you? I, and I always continue to try to keep up on case law, so I know you, if something, you. you know, I mean, I, can you say the same about the law, any other officers? I out there? I don't know what anybody else does in their off time, but I know oh, that so, if the law, like so, perfect so. example, uh, you used to be able to charge somebody with criminal mischief if they take your phone and you prevent. Let's say you and I are fighting, I take your phone so you can't call nine one one for help. Yeah, I read about that. All right, I used to be able to charge. I used to be able to get charged with criminal mischief for you not allowing not allowing you the chance to um uh, uh i'm sorry I, I used to have to damage your phone in order to get charged with that criminal mischief mm. by denying you access to call 911 the law finally changed i don't have to cause damage to that phone i just have to deny you the ability to call 911 but if how, would calling 911 do any good when um you know the responders to 911 are the ones causing me harm so the the problem that you have where you live is dialing nine one one could cost you valuable time, meaning down there on Seneca Street you may get picked up in either Chautauqua or Cattaraugus County nine one one. Once they deem that you're not in their jurisdiction, they're going to transport they're going to transfer your phone call to Buffalo nine one one. You're going to do the same loop of loop of loop. They're going to say, oh, you're not in our jurisdiction. They're going to transfer you to the sheriff's. And then the sheriffs are going to respond. That's why I tell everybody, call our dispatch directly. You'll get help within minutes because we grab the closest car, whether it's a trooper, whether it's us. And and there's nothing Satan you can't say, hey, listen, I need the sheriffs here because the state police are this or the guana is this or whatever, the marshals are that. You can request, I need a sheriff here because I don't trust whoever's at my door. Give me a sheriff I can talk to. Or give me the state police, I can talk. You know what I mean? You can ask for somebody. You know what, you know what I can't make sense of? I was over there that day with the state trooper. Yep. At the same time, you guys don't communicate like that, your agencies. So it was obviously coming from a meeting. Nope. No, absolutely not. My partner and I were acting on a tip. You had a warrant. We verified the warrant on the way to your house. On a tip that I had a warrant? Yep. Somebody called and said, hey... So, this gentleman has a warrant, and he's at this address right now. My partner and I, the canine guy, had them run and make sure the warrant was valid before we showed up. Because I'm not going to come in and knock on your door without knowing that there's a warrant for sure. Well, what, All right? what, what made you sure on the other end of that, um, of that call? Like I said, when we ran your name, dispatch. dispatch told us you had a warrant. They put the warrant on the card. So I knew I had a valid warrant. All right, state police heard the address and knew it because he's the one that the one that was there that day, Trooper Mallory. I believe he's the one, and I could be wrong, but I believe he was the one that did the uh, warrant for the state police. So that's how he knew your address. He's a liar. He, that guy. We didn't call them, and we didn't deal with them. I didn't know he was coming because you and I were talking. For probably 10 yeah, minutes before he showed up. He didn't show up with oh, us yeah. at the same time. He walked up afterwards 
Yep, he walked up afterwards and stood off to the side. But we were there probably 10 minutes before he got there talking with you. And if you had come out right away and left, I wouldn't have even known you had the warrant for them. He's the one that showed up and said you that he had a warrant for you as well. I found out the same time you did that you had a warrant with the state police. He's full of shit. And, and if, it's, if the court keeps the record... 3036 and 5 The there was no criminal mischief charge. Receive the call. And that it be dismissed. Call yeah, I don't know what happened there. So, yeah, so then he wants to come to my house Marshall. and drag me out of my house again on the same fucking bullshit charge that he never established was probable cause for in the first place? You know, that's where my distrust stems from, is for shit like that. Under false pretenses he came, fucking, not him, another one of the, uh, another one, I don't, no, no need to name names. Right. He'll be getting sued. It's a fucking false arrest. It's a false arrest because there was no warrant. And I, I have still, I still have not been afforded the, the opportunity to confront my accuser. Family. What's that? You familiar with that concept? Who, uh, the right what's that? to confront your accuser. Right. You get all that at court. Yeah, hasn't happened been arrested since July. Right, but you didn't go back to court for the I've next court courts, meeting. I've been to court so many fucking times. At, like I said, the way, the way it's supposed to work is you get arrested, you come to the Holy Center, you get fingerprinted, pictured, processed. That already happened. Right, I know that. Then you go see the judge, which happened. You got arraigned by the judge, she gave you a court date. Now, somewhere along the lines, whatever happened, happened. <laughs> And you didn't make a court date. Somewhere down those court dates, the accuser or victim, whatever they're called at the time, has to show up and verify the facts of the case and inform the court they want to continue with the with the charges and the proceedings. At that point in time, you have a trial. That's where you are able to. Um, that's where you're able to go with. It. Um, that's a very important part because um, that's at the preliminary hearing, right? Well, the because that, that would be at the trial. Preliminary hearing is just you showing up at the arraignment, getting read your your uh, charges, and then sent on your way. But there's supposed to be some some type of, of facts or something presented at that point because um, if, if yeah, it's the us, it's the uh, supporting deposition of facts. So what happens is, you know, let's just say today I picked up for shoplifting. All right, I would have to be able to put in the accusatory, you know, that I, Deputy Van Wee, uh, charge Christopher with pettit larceny of two Kit Kats and a Snickers bar totaling $2.99 from Tops on Main Street in Buffalo, yada, yada, yada. Well, well your word is not hearsay because you're, but you witnessed me stealing Well, I, kids. no, I, I would get I would get called from top saying, hey, we got a guy on shoplifting here. Here's the thing. So in order for me to type up the accusatory, they have to give me a receipt of what was taken, how much it was, you know, with tax and everything included. I would have to get a statement from somebody saying they, they witnessed you steal it. I would have to get a statement in there stating that you walked by all points of sale and out the door without paying. Well, that would be a witness then. then right? I would need a witness. I would need uh, something like that. And then usually, at that point in time, I personally like to ask, what are your videos? So I can see the subject walking through the store and see that he avoided uh, the cashier station, okay, whatever so the case. that's three things then. That's three separate things then that you would want to see. And then you would, be, um, you would be satisfied that that's um, sufficient probable cause. anything you're allowed you're afforded the opportunity especially now with bail reform you're afforded the opportunity to be released until your next court date you don't show up at that court date they reissue the warrant 
And, and I'm and telling you, if, if you, you get, it, it, a court date because you, you had to have been given a court date at one point in time. Yeah, which, when which you I, saw which the which judge, I to, which I went to. right? But at somewhere, there was another court date that got missed. Whether you were sick, whether the court got closed for COVID, whatever the issue was, you missed a court date somewhere along the lines. Well, I was never told about it because it was in discovery. It was in discovery phases. There was no, there was Every no single date. time, you, they wouldn't let you walk out of court without giving you another court date. Three. Which, the, regardless of whatever phase they're in. Denied a meaningful hearing. Denied a meaningful hearing and to confront my accuser, yeah, accuser and to establish probable cause because we're a preliminary hearing would be where probable cause would be established. You know, and um, absent that, could have, the whole thing could have been dismissed right there. 479. It should have. Well, like I said, you're more than welcome to bring all this up to the judge tonight. Well, will I see the judge tonight, you think? It'll most likely be tonight. It could be as late as tomorrow mid morning. I hope so. I'm gonna be so worried about my cats. Family. Four seven nine two zero. Yeah. It just ain't right. It's unnecessary. I never tried to get it. All I wanted was a, a paper. A paper to tell me to, to know how to move forward. I'm like being stuck in limbo with this shit, you know? Well. Four three two real it, it ain't right. It ain't fucking right. One in fifty two. Six four four two five. Have a good one. Thank you, you too. I wonder if we caught shift changes. If that's what's holding us up here. Did they have to come out and all that? Well, the the problem is they're doing construction behind you, yeah. so we can't come in the back way anymore. So we have to come in, drive down the opposite way, do a U-turn back here. And if they don't see us right away, I don't even know if we can be seen on the camera from here. Can you just throw me in a bucket of ballpen so I can use a cam? I would love to be able to, as soon as we can get you in there, they got to do their, their quick little search. They give you, they go through your property real quick, they document exactly what you have, and then you go you go in and you can use the can. So hopefully this isn't taking too long. But once we get inside the jail and you go in that little search room, yeah. We have a representative. You're in their custody. You're no longer in mine. I have to shut my body cam off at that time. Once I go inside the jail. So you're gonna have you're gonna be on the, the jail cameras at that time. Alright, just so we're clear, my body cam gets shut off as soon as I walk in the door. No. 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 You're as soon as so we're on camera right now. At the top corner of this this garage is a there's a camera. Once we get inside, we're on cameras in the garage. Once we get inside, that room is under some kind of uh, surveillance as well. So I'm just letting you know that my body cam footage will end once we get inside that door and the door shuts. I have to shut mine off. I'm not allowed to record inside there. And Wait, it's still, they don't. Uh, I, I, honest to God, I don't know why. Just told that that's what my rules are. In case they need and I'm not allowed to record. Um, you know, your, say, medical diagnosis and whatnot at the hospital. You know, I'm not allowed to, st to stand right there. I usually will um, step back and let the doctors talk to you privately. Mm -hmm. You know, I still have to keep eyes on you. But I usually step back and will let, let's say, let's just say for whatever reason, um, they say, listen, you're not, they won't take you because you're injured, you're bloody, you need medical attention. I take you to the hospital, you see the doctor, we go in. When the doctor comes in and starts discussing your um, past history, whether it's mental, medical, or any of that oh, stuff, I usually back right. off so that you guys can have a quieter conversation and it's not all on, on the camera then. You know, you know, we're allowed to, but I always try to back healthy, off. Right? I always try to back off because your health is is your worry, not mine. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I'm not trying to sound. Maybe I worded that wrong. No, I, I, but I, I, your 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 health diagnosis, your health diagnosis is your business. Yeah. 
It's not mine. Your your health I, safety I you is meant. is mine. Okay. I I, I wanted to make sure we were clear because I did word it wrong here. Okay. Yeah. Make a note though. You know this is not personal. You know just please understand. I was I'm trying to um. You know, to gain, have understanding, you know. And, you know and, uh, I get it, and that's why I told you. I said, I'm not taking it personal. I left that day without taking it personal. I've been harmed, you know. I'm, I'm... Yep. And, and there's only, the only way to to gain the trust is to do it smoothly and efficiently okay. like we did today. Right. You know, but I didn't need to come in with a bowl and a, I didn't need to come in and prove a point and be a bowl in the china shop. But if it wasn't for previous encounters with your agency <laughs> and with the state troopers, you know, Yep. Arresting me by, by tricks and then not, not showing probable cause, you know, and, and not, um, den, you know, then denying me a meaningful hearing and, and all that shit, man. All of it. That ain't right. I do not deserve to be treated like that. Right. And that's why I said you I know, I didn't need to play that trick. I just. People could say something, you know, whatever they want, you know. It doesn't lend it, lend it any credibility. You know, it just means somebody has a vendetta against somebody. Yeah. You know, it's a hearsay. Now, if you witness me steal a candy bar. That's one thing, but if it, but if if the store says I stole the candy bar, they show you a receipt, right? Mm -hmm. And then they show you on um, video, I'm putting a candy bar in my pocket, and then another um, you know, customer saw me doing it too. Yeah, that, that, now that's probable cause, you know. That that makes sense. Why am I not afforded the uh, the same the same things, you know? It should have been dismissed. There we go. Right off. So it must have been shift change because there's nobody in here unless they already had them in and shut the door. I just hope you now realize that it wasn't that personal. No, I I never I never just, once thought it was personal. I for my safety. I just wanted, you know, without documentation, people change the stories, lie to me, you know, and cause me harm. All right. All right. Give me one second. I gotta lock up. That's no. Doing the thing here. Say served, it'll come down. Okay. My favorite stand right over here. Yeah. That's why we're out of his way. 